Today's episode is all about the great spotted woodpecker. But first, let's have a catch up as always. Following on from last week's episode all about leafcutter bees, which are in the family Megachylidae, Sean sent in this amazing photograph of a solitary bee. Now Megachylidae contains the leafcutter bees and the mason bees, and the bee in this photograph is a orange vented mason bee. It does have a Latin name, which I am going to attempt to pronounce, which is Osmia leiana. 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 It's an orange vented mason bee. We have another contribution from Pat, which are these beautiful perennial cornflowers. They're very attractive to bees. And to humans, I guess, because I like them as well. And finally, linking back to our previous pond episode, we've had Naomi send in this sequence of photographs of creatures in her own pond. As you can see in the first one, there are mosquito larvae, and then it moves on to a photograph of a, a mosquito emerging from the larval case. It's pupated into the adult form, resting on the surface of the water. And then finally you can see the adult mosquito kind of walking on water. Incredible blue eyes. I don't know if I just never got that close or I've never seen this species before, but sapphire blue eyes. Incredible. So today our focus is on one particular species, which is the great spotted woodpecker, because recently I had a juvenile come into my garden and it seemed like a gift from Mother Nature, so it would be rude not to make a video about them. We'll start off with some basics. How do you identify a great spotted woodpecker? Well, it's quite big, about the size of a, a blackbird, and it's black and white. It's also known as a, a pied woodpecker and it also has some uh, rather fancy uh, red underparts, under legs, around the tail area, very vibrant. On the head of the adult birds, the male, male woodpecker at the back, has a kind of a red patch, so the red nape patch, which is good to look out for. The female woodpecker doesn't have that, completely black on the top, so that's how you can distinguish the two genders. The juvenile woodpecker, which is a... Uh, we're not talking little fluffy chick, sort of a fledged woodpecker, juvenile, has a red cap all the way on the top. Very vibrant, very easy to spot, and that's uh, what came into the garden. You can also identify woodpeckers in flight, because they've got what the RSPB describe as a, a bouncing flight. I call it zigzagging, so when they're going along, they're going up, down, up, down, up, down, like that, as they move across the sky. And obviously if they then latch onto the side of a tree trunk, pretty much guaranteed that you got yourself a woodpecker there. It's also possible to identify woodpeckers from their sound, and we'll get to the obvious hammering in a minute. They do make a vocalisation, which is described as a sort of kick or kick sound, but I think it sounds like one squeak of a squeaky dog's toy. So if you're out in the woodland and you hear this, could be a woodpecker. Look up in the trees. Another obvious way to identify woodpeckers is from their hammering. So we've got a recording sent in by Emma of the woodpecker making that drumming noise. And there's another one here from Sean. Again, it's the, the drumming noise. Both genders can do this drumming to claim ownership of a territory. And in the breeding season, it will be the male who is drumming not only to keep the territory, but to attract a female. That's how they make the, the initial contact between each other, is through the drumming. The reason you can hear the hammering across from the other side of the wood, it's not because they're producing such a loud noise hammering with sheer force of will. They're actually being a bit more subtle. They're hammering at the correct frequency to make that bit of wood resonate, to kind of vibrate and allow their sound to be projected. So they're using the tree, limb, branch, whatever, as a sounding board, increase the coverage. And if they can't get hold of a tree limb, they have been known to hammer on telegraph poles, posts, metal posts, and even in one incident, a speaker, a metal speaker on a public address system. Hammering on that, very, very good. 
The drumming itself lasts for less than a second, and within that second there could be between 10 and 40 percussive blows on their sounding board. Very impressive. How can they achieve this feat without knocking themselves out, giving themselves a headache, a concussion or brain damage? Well, there's still uh, unknowns surrounding it, but there's been a fair bit of investigation into it. Woodpeckers have some shock absorbent tissue between the base of the bill and the skull. So there's a bit of cushioning there, but other studies have also shown the, the actual nature of their skull is made of kind of slightly flexible plates, so there's a bit of give in there. Also have a particular arrangement of bones within the skull, and there's one in particular called the hyoid bone, which is extremely weird and odd and kind of acts like a seatbelt mechanism around the skull. Now there's a very interesting study that I found which I'll put a link to in the description and you can read more about this. But the uh, takeaway message is a lot of different factors working in combination to stop that woodpecker getting a headache, getting a concussion. And the findings of these studies could potentially be used to create more advanced safety helmets to protect humans from head injuries. Another way to listen out for woodpeckers is just by the tap tap tapping of them looking for food. So they're voracious predators of insects, but they will also eat seeds from pine cones, they will eat nuts, they will even eat other birds' eggs and chicks if they can get their little beaks on them. One particular feature to look out for, which I've, I've never seen myself, is if you're in the woods and you see a pile of cones that looks like they've been plucked at, then that could be the sign of a woodpecker operating in the area. Because in order to get the seeds out, they will wedge the cone in their own favourite little groove in a tree, keep it there, prise out those seeds, and then let the cone drop. And that's favourite workbench area is known as an anvil. So if you're out, see a pile of cones there, have a look up, you might be able to spot a sort of pecked over groove in a tree trunk. It's an anvil of a great spotted woodpecker. The other major attention draw to woodpeckers is the squeaky begging of the juveniles. And if you hear that, you might then find the nest with the parents going in to feed the chick. According to the BTO, June last month was the best time to see woodpeckers because this is the time when the parents will bring them into people's gardens and teach them how to feed from a bird feeder. And I guess that's what happened recently. I've certainly last June, I've got some photographs of parent woodpecker doing just that. So that was last year's brood. There's been a, a new youngster this year, which turned up at the end of June. I haven't seen the parents, but it's somehow been able to work out how to use the bird feeders itself. And it keeps coming back it's quite a regular visit to the garden, which I, well, I never expected to have a, a resident woodpecker. So that's very pleasing. Well, now I can see properly again, because the sun's gone in. I can say that's all I have on woodpeckers. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, get in touch if you've got anything to contribute. Until next time, goodbye. So if you're out in the woodland and you hear this, let's try that again. If you're out in the woodland and you hear this, no. If you're out in the woodland and you hear this, no.